Early in the morning of April 26, 1986, four reactors exploded at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant in Ukraine. It caused what the United Nations has called the greatest environmental disaster in the history of humanity. The long-lived radiation released by the accident means the disaster continues 35 plus years later. It still affects the lives of millions of people, not to mention the natural world they live in. But what you're about to see is on a whole other level. 15 Most Shocking Things Ever Found in Chernobyl, Part 2 Radioactive Kindergartens Welcome to Kopachi. This was a thriving village in 1986 when the nearby Chernobyl nuclear power plant disaster happened and was home to over 1,000 people. However, it was quickly evacuated and was heavily contaminated. The entire village was demolished and buried. All that remains today is the slowly crumbling kindergarten. Located just a few miles south of the power plant, the kindergarten stands silent. The beds used for daytime naps are rusting and toys and clothes are scattered as they would in any child's bedroom. The only difference is the lonely and cold feel the dust-coated toys exude. As a result of its proximity to the power plant, it also was heavily contaminated. All of the wooden buildings surrounding the radioactive kindergarten were quickly torn down. The remains of the buildings and the contaminated topsoil were buried in hastily dug pits. However, this was not an ideal solution. The buried buildings and the contaminants they held were washed through into the water table and allowed the radioactive isotopes to permeate deeper into the ground. And there are a number of radioactive hotspots in the area, including one at the base of a tree by the kindergarten. Fasten your seatbelts because it's time for today's sweet topic. What a camera captures in Chernobyl shocked the whole world. And when an eyeball from a mysterious creature is staring directly at you as you film seemingly inches away, this is a close call most people would choose to forget. But it's all captured on camera. Question is, what is this big-eyed, hairy creature staring back? Could it be one of the mutated animals that thrived in this region of Ukraine after the Chernobyl tragedy of 1986, when radiation here changed the natural world forever? While humans are strictly prohibited from living in the Chernobyl exclusion zone, many other species have settled there. Brown bears, wolves, lynx, bison, deer, moose, beavers, foxes, badgers, wild boar, raccoons, dogs, and more than 200 species of birds have formed their own ecosystem within the disaster area. Along with the larger animals, a variety of amphibians, fish, worms, and bacteria make the unpopulated environment their home. Perhaps this is something else, something we haven't seen before, something brand new. What do you think? Leave your thoughts in the comments with the hashtag Sweet Topic. Abandoned Church For over 35 years, entire towns and villages around Chernobyl have been abandoned. While the incident has gone down as one of the worst nuclear accidents of all time, it's left us with a perfectly preserved time capsule in the village of Krasny, an abandoned 18th century wooden church. This eerie footage shows us in the church, deep inside Chernobyl's restricted zone, which has remained in pristine condition since then. It stands in a tranquil state, both inside and out, giving an unprecedented glimpse into what life was like before the disaster. And the Holy House has also remarkably managed to retain some of its original artifacts, including several crosses and many perfectly preserved religious murals that occupy much of the walls and ceiling. Built in the year 1800, this wooden church remains in the center of the village located on the left bank of the Pripyat River. This region had more than 20 churches by the mid-20th century. However, the vast majority of them were destroyed during World War II when the Soviet government was established on these lands. This church was officially closed and there were attempts to destroy it. Fortunately, the inhabitants of the village managed to intervene. Wild Horses Wild horses with rugged coats and rigid manes still thrive in this unlikely nature reserve, the Chernobyl Exclusion Zone. The Chernobyl Nuclear Power Plant Zone of Alienation is an officially designated exclusion zone around the site of the Chernobyl nuclear reactor disaster. And years after the world's worst nuclear disaster, the breed of wild horse has thrived. Since the disaster, the area has become a haven for the stocky, endangered breed of wild horse native to Asia. 
The breed discovered in Asia's expansive Gobi Desert became all but extinct by the middle of the 20th century, partially due to overhunting. It was reintroduced by scientists to areas of Mongolia, China, and Russia as part of preservation efforts. In a different program, 30 of the horses were released here in 1998, replacing an extinct horse native to the region. The experiment in Ukraine was soon halted, but the horses remained and now number around 150 in parts of the exclusion zone, with around another 60 over the border in Belarus. Under the right conditions, the Ukrainian herd could eventually increase to three or even 500 animals, experts believe. Following the success in Chernobyl, there is discussion over introducing other endangered species to Ukraine's exclusion zone. <laughs> Claw of Death It sits alone on the outskirts of Pripyat, where it was abandoned in the aftermath of the cleanup efforts following the 1986 explosion. The claw took its place when the operation to clean up the yard of the Chernobyl plant ended, and there it remains. Workers unsure of where to leave the highly radioactive claw dumped the frightening piece of machinery in the remote forest in the hope nobody would ever find it. It was simply deemed too dangerous to leave anywhere else. It's now become a creepy relic of the tragedy. It cannot be buried or melted due to the possible irradiation of the soil and groundwater. But while the claw isn't easy to find, a handful of official guides know where it's located. Even so, very few tourists request permission from Ukrainian officials to get close to the highly contaminated claw. And experts fear it's so radioactive that a single touch could kill a person. Yet, like almost everything about Chernobyl, even a discarded piece of radioactive machinery is still capable of stirring up interest. The artifact both scares and attracts tourists, but thanks to this, the Claw of Death turned into an interesting exhibit, which is almost always included in the tours. <laughs> Chernobyl Dogs There are a lot of animals in the Chernobyl exclusion zone, but you don't get to interact with many. But when it comes to the dogs, they're especially friendly. Typically, we think of Chernobyl as an abandoned wasteland, but there are thousands of workers at the nuclear power plant and nearly 1,000 stray dogs that live in the surrounding areas. Nobody knows which of the dogs are directly descended from stranded pets and which may have wandered into the zone from elsewhere. But they're all dogs of the zone now. Their lives are perilous. They're at risk from radioactive contamination, wolf attacks, wildfires and starvation, among other threats. So a rescue project began in 2017 with the aim of reducing the number of stray dogs by sterilizing them as well as providing them with medical care. As well as improving the conditions and health of the dogs, the aim of the project is to create safer conditions for workers at the plant and the exclusion zone. When the dogs, which can roam over wide areas, are cared for by the vets, they're checked and washed to remove any radioactive dust in their fur. According to the experts, the dogs in this area are apparently the smartest and most agile they've ever encountered. <laughs> Russian Woodpecker from 1976 to 1989, a strange noise could be heard on shortwave radios all around the world. The noise was a repetitive tapping noise that many believed sounded like a woodpecker. The signal was immediately noticed by both amateur and professional radio operators. Even commercial industries and devices in people's homes could pick it up. But although the source would not be publicly confirmed for years, those in the radio community had already concluded that the noise was produced by a Soviet radar system. The source was the Duga radar, a critical part of the Soviet Union's early warning system to detect incoming missiles. The antenna of the Duga radar was huge, over 2,000 feet long and almost 500 feet high. The radars were even protected by their own air defense systems to ensure their survival during a conflict. As conventional radar can only see as far as the horizon, the Duga radar circumvented this problem by bouncing its signal off of the ionosphere enabling it to see over the horizon. To do this, an enormously powerful transmitter is required. The super antenna was pointed north toward the United States, which the Soviets believed was the most likely to launch intercontinental missiles. <laughs> Chernobyl Swimming Pool The Azure Swimming Pool is in the abandoned city of Pripyat, Ukraine. The swimming pool is considered to be one of the cleanest places in the contaminated region. By clean, we mean in terms of radioactivity. However, the swimming pool and the adjacent indoor basketball court have been abandoned and left to decay since its closure, 
an eerie reminder of the once thriving community. The complex was built in the 1970s and remained in use until 1998, even after the 1986 disaster, mainly used by Chernobyl liquidators whose job was to clean up the mess after the explosion. Today, it's a hot spot for dark tourists visiting the exclusion zone. Outside the modern 1970s design, it's still evident and the iconic white clock sits on the highest point of the building. The huge panes of glass are long gone and the pool stands abandoned. However, the starting blocks, the diving board, and the changing rooms are still there undisturbed. Visiting in the late afternoon in the winter months is said to be the perfect time to visit as the light filters through into the pool, making it a popular photo spot for tourists. <laughs> Chernobyl Abandoned Stadium As you can see, sporting events no longer happen here, but at one time, this is where sports fans would come to enjoy one of Ukraine's biggest soccer teams when nuclear power was at the forefront of modern technology. Welcome to Pripyat's Avonhard Stadium, located in Chernobyl's infamous exclusion zone. Back in the day, the city was built to be one of the most buzzworthy in the former Soviet Union, and geared to young people and the average age of the 50,000 or so who lived here was just 26 years old. It had nightclubs, swimming pools, bars, and cafes overlooking a lake. It also had this sports stadium to keep locals entertained. With a capacity of 5,000 people, the sports club that played here was mainly composed of players from the villages nearby. Sadly, this is what it looks like now. Rows of rotting wooden benches line the concrete stand, leading up to the ruins of the covered press box. The field is covered in trees. Opened in 1970, it existed for just 16 years before being abandoned to nuclear fallout a hundred times more lethal than the bombs dropped in Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Today, not many places in Chernobyl show the startling reclamation of nature as this place. <laughs> Fairground Chernobyl the Pripyat Amusement Park was to have its big grand opening in May of 1986, but these plans were canceled the month previously when the Chernobyl nuclear disaster occurred a few miles away. The park contained everything you would need for a good time. A large Ferris wheel, bumper cars, a parachute ride, a shooting range, and more. Now these rides now sit rusting as grass and shrubs grow through the cracked concrete. This footage shows just how haunted this place really looks. Festive decorations still linger near the haunting rides for the planned opening that never came. The fairground was open briefly when it was decided that a distraction was required on the morning after the explosion, just before the notice to evacuate was given. An incomprehensible action today, given what we know now about the severity of the disaster and the levels of radiation already in the area that morning. Today, radiation levels around the park vary. The liquidators washed radiation into the soil after the helicopters carrying radioactive materials used the grounds as a landing strip. Concreted areas are relatively safe, but areas where moss has built up are high. It's lonely and desolate, a jarring place of normality and disaster that was never meant to be. Radioactive Control Room The control room of Reactor 4 at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant one of the most ominous places on Earth has become a tourist attraction, and now companies have begun allowing people to briefly visit the highly radioactive control room where the worst nuclear disaster in history unfolded. The tour option is part of the big changes at the site of the disaster. Recently, Ukrainian authorities took charge of the area called the New Safe Confinement Dome, which now covers the contaminated reactor building. The massive $1.6 billion structure took 22 years of planning and construction and is expected to safeguard the damaged reactor for 100 years when experts suggest it may be safe enough to demolish. The dome is the reason that the area is safe enough to allow more tourism to Chernobyl. The radiation in the room is 40,000 times higher than normal levels. So visitors must take precautions. People have to wear protective suits, helmets and masks and are limited to five minutes inside the space. Afterward, they'll undergo two mandatory radiology tests to gauge their exposure. That's typical of most tours in Chernobyl. To that end, Ukraine has begun developing new tourist routes and waterways in the area and will be building and upgrading radiation checkpoints as well. <laughs> Gas Masks in Pripyat School Before the Chernobyl accident of 1986, the town of Pripyat was considered the glory of the former Soviet Union. More than 48,000 inhabitants were living here. 
Many of them were employed directly in the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. A week before the nuclear accident, children at the Pripyat Elementary School were trained to use safety equipment against nuclear danger. These masks aid and protect the ability to breathe in the presence of gas, smoke, or other poisonous fumes and were being made before the first use of modern chemical weapons. For the students who went to school here, they were just a part of life. The child-sized masks would have been kept on site during the Cold War era and were designed to provide protection against nuclear, biological, and chemical attacks, and they were never more necessary than in the aftermath of the Chernobyl disaster. But as you can see, no single gas mask was used, and the videos from inside this school really show the world that children and faculty had to deal with back then. And now, hundreds of gas masks lie strewn across the floor, a reminder of the hundreds of children who once ran through the corridors. Cooling Pond Catfish The cooling pond used to stabilize the temperature of Chernobyl nuclear power plant reactors, and now it's home to some unexpected giants. It may seem that the catfish in the cooling pond must be mutants, but they're not. For obvious reason, catfish are not caught in the exclusion zone, which is why they grow to colossal proportions here. As for the maximum size of these aquatic giants, a quick Google search will turn up stories of 800-pound record breakers. The cooling pond pretty much acts as a natural reserve. These Wells catfish are actually living in the cooling pond at the power plant. In the first hours after the accident, workers here were trying to cool down the reactor at all costs. Later, they had to pump radioactive water from the building of the power plant into the cooling pond. More than 35 years have passed since then, and the power plant is no more. But the cooling pond has a new purpose. It's home to these catfish. Living in the reservoir, representatives of flora and fauna are affected by radioactive elements. So the Chernobyl catfish can be called radioactive, but not mutant. They are indeed huge, but they're no river monsters. They simply do not have predators. Plus, they're being fed by tourists daily. That's also why they grow to these enormous sizes. Mutated bugs Firebugs can be found from the Atlantic coast of Europe to the northwest China, the Americas, and even India. They're easily recognizable by a distinctive red-black symmetrical pattern on their back, and they're thriving here in Ukraine despite the nuclear disaster over 35 years ago. They just look and behave a little differently than they used to before the tragic accident. Researchers started collecting these little bugs in different places they visited, from the most contaminated parts to relatively clean areas. And once they had several hundred of them, it was very obvious that deformed patterns on the mutated bugs were much more prevalent. These fireflies were visibly showing the degrees of mutation on their tough exoskeleton. The impact of radiation on rates of mutation varies a good deal by species, but statistically, there's a simple relationship with dose. Small dose, small effect. Big dose, big effect. Scientists do know that some species might be less susceptible than others, and perhaps mutant bugs could adapt to such stressful conditions. Over evolutionary time, experts expect that populations will return to normal. These bugs have proven how strong they are and that nature finds a way. Radiator Boar over 35 years after a reactor exploded at the Chernobyl nuclear power plant, radiation is still turning up in some unexpected places. For instance, in the wild boars. And it's even been found in boars in Germany and the Czech Republic. The 1986 nuclear disaster spewed the radioactive metal cesium-137 into the atmosphere. It settled into the soil. There, the mushrooms these animals eat absorb it. In fact, the wild boars are being irradiated by their own food the wild mushrooms they depend on during the cold winter months. And when a boar eats the mushrooms, the radiation travels up the food chain. These radioactive boars aren't turning into mutant pigs, but they aren't safe for eating either. For people, cesium-137 is not safe for consumption. Eating it spreads the radioactive atoms throughout the body, which can up your risk of disease. So if you visit this region and eat the infamous Ukrainian wild boar goulash, you should be safe. The dose is likely low enough that you probably would be okay. But if you were to eat that radiation-flavored meat multiple times a week for months on end, well, the hazardous meat is banned from use and food inspectors screen wild meat before it goes to market. <coughs> Abandoned Hospital Before the nuclear disaster, close to 50,000 people lived here. Not anymore. 
As you can see, on the roof of this abandoned hospital, a sign reads, Health of the Nation, the Country's Wealth. The Pripyat City Hospital used to be a very busy place. The hospital had 410 beds. The clinics and outpatient buildings were spread out across several interconnected buildings, a morgue, maternity ward, infectious disease ward, and dental clinic as well. It was here, where on the night of the Chernobyl disaster in 1986, that many power plant workers were initially treated. All things, including first responders' clothes, outerwear of the victims, and the bedsheets of which they were lying, uniforms and shoes were thrown into the basement. They were full of radioactive particles, and it was dangerous for both the people who arrived at the hospital and the medical personnel. Their clothes still remain in the hospital basement, too contaminated to be moved. Tools, medical instruments, and documents were left in a mess everywhere. The hospital was abandoned just days after the disaster. It was no longer possible to work in an environment with that much radioactivity inside. Radiation levels here are still high, and it's still considered the most dangerous place in Pripyat. No matter how many years pass since this monumental disaster, more shocking discoveries keep turning up. Still, it's endlessly fascinating, and it can teach us so much more about the effects of nuclear disasters.